Just days ago, astronomers watched as comet R2 Swan rocketed from obscurity to become visible to the naked eye, its brightness surging sixfold in just 48 hours after skimming just 75 million kilometers from the sun. Suddenly, a golden dust fan and an electric blue ion tail erupted across the sky, spanning farther than five full moons. Now, with the sun hurling a massive storm of solar plasma directly toward Swan's glowing tail, experts warn this comet could be torn apart, its anatomy rewritten in real time before our eyes. How did R2 Swan just do something no one thought possible near Earth, and will it survive what's coming next? On September 12th, comet R2 Swan rounded the sun at a distance of just 0.50 astronomical units still hidden from most telescopes by the glare. Within hours, a ripple of surprise swept through the amateur astronomy networks. High-cadence photometry from Australia and Japan began to register a sharp, unexpected climb in brightness. By the evening of September 14th, magnitude estimates posted to global comet forums showed Swan had vaulted from 7.4 to 5.8, an increase of more than six times in visible light. For observers under dark skies, Swan had crossed the threshold into naked eye territory, a leap that few predicted and even fewer could explain. The reaction was immediate. Telegram groups and Slack channels filled with urgent alerts. Backyard astronomers, many using nothing more than binoculars or small telescopes, relayed images and magnitude readings in near real time. Within 12 hours, Professional observatories were racing to confirm the numbers, triggering emergency requests for spectroscopic and imaging time. The comet's outburst was so abrupt that some suspected an error in calibration, but the data held steady across continents and instruments. This wasn't just a statistical anomaly. It was a global event unfolding hour by hour, a rare moment when the entire observing community, amateur and professional, became a single, coordinated sensor network. Every new image, every fresh data point, hinted at something extraordinary happening beneath Swan's icy surface. The urgency was palpable. If the comet could change this quickly, what else might be waiting to reveal itself as observers rushed to capture every possible detail before the next transformation? The coma and tail of R2 Swan now stretch across more than two and a half degrees of sky, an expanse that easily dwarfs the full moon five times over. Wide field images from Australia and Japan capture this spectacle in all its complexity. At the heart of the display, a golden fan of dust arcs outward, formed by sunlight scattering off dense, mineral-rich grains. These particles, lifted by jets from fresh vents, drift outward in a slow, sunward curve, building a luminous bridge that glows warm against the blackness. Running straight through this dust, an electric blue ion channel slices into space, thin and rigid, its color shaped by charged carbon monoxide plus molecules racing away from the nucleus. The contrast is striking. Gold and blue, dust and plasma, two streams sharing the same path but driven by separate forces. Jet-like plumes erupt from the core, visible as slender, shifting spokes in high-resolution images. Some curve gently with the comet's rotation, while others shoot outward in sudden bursts, tracing the spots where the crust has fractured under internal pressure. Knotty condensations, compact, bright clumps, dot the inner tail, marking pockets where gas and dust collide and recombine before dispersing. Each feature hints at a restless engine beneath the surface, one that can reshape the comet's entire profile in hours. The sheer scale of Swan's tail, its layered structure, and its delicate balance between dust and plasma set the stage for what happens when the solar wind, already gathering strength, sweeps through this intricate architecture. Thermal models of R2 Swan's nucleus point to a volatile reservoir buried just beneath the surface, an 8 to 16 meter deep layer, rich in carbon dioxide ice, 
pressed under a crust of dust and rock. As the comet swung in toward perihelion, sunlight penetrated the outer layers, raising subsurface temperatures by several degrees. Laboratory analogs show that at 155 Kelvin, carbon dioxide vapor pressure can exceed 300,000 pascals, more than enough to fracture even the densest cometary crust. The pressure threshold for rupture, calculated from mechanical tests on carbon-rich ice mixtures, falls between 250,000 and 400,000 pascals. Swan's outburst fits these numbers almost exactly. The observed light curve, rising from magnitude 7.4 to 5.8 in less than two days, matches the predicted surge if a pressurized pocket suddenly vented, blasting gas and dust through new surface vents. Spectroscopy from the James Webb Space Telescope and ground-based telescopes detected a carbon dioxide to water ratio near 7.6 to 1, far above the solar system average, pointing to a reservoir that had been sealed for millennia. Polarimetric mapping during the outburst revealed a spike in dust-rich jets, consistent with rapid venting rather than catastrophic breakup. There were no signs of major fragmentation, just localized fractures and fresh jets. The forensic evidence now converges on a single cause, a shallow, highly pressurized carbon dioxide layer, breached as heat from the sun reached its critical depth. This eruption delivered both the energy and the material to reshape the coma and tail, exposing fresh ice and dust in the hours before solar wind conditions changed. The internal mystery, for now, finds its answer in physics. Pressure, heat, and a crust just thin enough to give way. On September 28th at 0843 Coordinated Universal Time, the Sun released an M6.4 class flare from active region 4232, the most powerful eruption recorded in months. Within minutes, coronagraphs tracked a coronal mass ejection racing outward at close to 900 kilometers per second. Solar wind propagation models from the European Space Agency and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration began calculating the trajectory, flagging a broad flank of the ejection on course to intersect the region of space now occupied by Swan's ion tail. The predicted window for impact stretched from October 1st to the 3rd, a narrow corridor of time when the comet's electric blue plasma stream would stand directly in the path of the incoming shock. Solar physicists watched as Enlil, an EUH Foria model, runs updated in real time, each iteration narrowing the arrival estimate by a few crucial hours. The risk was clear. If the coronal mass ejection's embedded magnetic field arrived with a strong southward component, the probability of magnetic reconnection would spike. In past events, such encounters have triggered rapid tail disconnection, stripping away vast knots of plasma in less than two hours, leaving only a truncated streamer behind. The scenario now facing Swan was no longer theoretical. Dynamic pressure from the solar wind was set to surge, and the comet's tail, already stretched thin by recent outgassing, would be forced to withstand a direct solar assault. The astronomy community responded with a global mobilization. Observatory schedulers, amateur networks, and solar monitoring teams coordinated to cover the critical window. Every new solar image, every model output, fed into a shared countdown. The question was no longer if the coronal mass ejection would strike, but when and how violently the encounter would reshape Swan's fragile ion stream. Inside the global comet community, the countdown began as soon as Swan's trajectory placed it on a collision course with the incoming coronal mass ejection. Slack threads and telegram groups, already buzzing from the outburst, shifted into high gear. An amateur coordinator in Queensland mapped out hourly observation blocks, relaying weather updates and visibility forecasts to backyard astronomers across three continents. Data sharing platforms filled with raw images and magnitude logs, each stamped with precise, coordinated universal time. 
On the professional side, a mission scheduler at a major observatory fielded urgent a target of opportunity requests. Juggling time slots, negotiating instrument handovers, and drafting last-minute memos to telescope directors. Every available window was claimed, even as the solar elongation angle narrowed, threatening to cut off Earth-based views within days. The aim was simple, maintain an unbroken record of Swan's tail in coma, capturing any sign of magnetic disruption before the blackout forced the handoff to Mars-based assets. For a brief window, the world's telescopes, large and small, worked as one, racing the sun's glare to catch every moment of Swan's unfolding drama. On the morning of October 2nd, time-stamped images from the Las Cumbres Observatory revealed a sudden kink in Swan's ion tail. Within minutes, the plasma stream fractured, severing a glowing blue segment that drifted away as a distinct knot, an event confirmed by amateur astronomers in Japan and South Africa. These disconnection episodes, unfolding in less than 90 minutes, matched the predictions for magnetic reconnection driven by the CME's southward magnetic field. Meanwhile, the James Webb Space Telescope's spectrograph delivered a result that left comet scientists astonished. A carbon dioxide to water ratio of 7.6 to 1, far exceeding values seen in any recent comet. Yet, the classic green C2 bands, so prominent in most bright comets, remained unusually faint, if present at all. One spectroscopist described the chemistry as alien, even for a long-period comet. For backyard observers, the best chance to spot Swan now comes just before dawn, binoculars aimed low in the eastern sky. The comet's future and the true cause of its spectral oddities remain wide-open questions. In just 48 hours after its September 12th perihelion, C-2025 R2, also known as Swan, brightened sixfold, its tail stretching over 2.5 degrees, wider than five full moons. Confirmed by photometry and wide-field imaging, this event mobilized amateur astronomers worldwide and triggered emergency follow-up by professional observatories. As documented, the September 28th M6.4 solar flare launched a coronal mass ejection at 900 kilometers per second, with models predicting a direct encounter with Swan's ion tail between October 1st and 3rd. Observers recorded sudden tail disconnections and plasma knots drifting away all while the James Webb Space Telescope spectra revealed an unusual 7.6 to 1 carbon dioxide to water ratio and missing swan bands. Yet, the fate of swan's nucleus and the long-term effects of the solar storm remain unknown. With Earth-based telescopes soon blinded by solar glare, Mars orbiters will continue the watch. C-2025 R2 has rewritten expectations for comet behavior near Earth, challenging models of outburst physics and volatile preservation. The record now stands. Even with decades of comet studies, nature can still surprise us in plain sight. <laughs>